Everybody, it's your boy Michael Lindell, and I am here, I am here to talk about money, I'm here to talk about finance, and today, today, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about how you can use your tax return money to invest in real estate, all right? So a lot of people want to invest in real estate, you want to find out how you can invest it, and I get asked all the time, how can I invest in real estate, how can I do it, or what vehicles can I invest in, right? In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can invest in real estate with very minimal money. And also what I did, I found a property that's currently on um, on the market right now. And if you want to go look at it, you can. But there's a lot of other properties out there that you can also take advantage of um, at the same time. All right. So this property here, this property is at eight, is at 870 uh, Manor, I believe it is. 870, uh, I have it pulled up here. It is 870 Mason Turner, excuse me. 870 Mason Turner, um, it's a condo um, in Atlanta, Georgia. And so the asking price right now is, it is 800, no, I'm sorry. It's $118,000, all right. The property is a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars all right that's the price on this property okay the first thing that you, oh, and let me let me back up a little bit okay before we get into underwriting this deal and seeing this deal is a, is a benefit would be a benefit for you or will be worth your time what we're gonna do I'm gonna talk to you a little bit just for a second about NOI all right these are some key phrases that you're gonna hear from time to time you're gonna hear NOI you're gonna hear cap rate all right some of you already know these terms. If, if, if you do, great. If not, you want to learn, all right? So NOI is income minus expenses, all right? The NOI does not include your debt, okay? It does not include your interest payment back to the bank. It will only include your income as well as your expenses for the property, okay? Your cap rate is assuming that if you were to purchase this property, okay, full asking price of $118,000, full price, you're gonna see a cap rate. Typically, it's gonna be anywhere between, I don't know, 3% to about 15%, right? That's your cap rate. So assuming you pay $118,000 cash, they are basically saying you'll make between three to 15% on this property, okay? including you know your income your expenses and all of that stuff if you were to pay cash for this property this is how much you will make this is your return this will be your yield it'll be between three to fifteen percent per year okay all right so those are a couple terms that you want to you know always uh pay attention to especially as we go over this so this property here is a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars okay your you the first thing that you're gonna ask yourself is it's going to say, okay, all right, how much is my down payment going to be? Now, this unit here is, is a four, it's a, it's a, it's a condo, right? But it's a two bedroom, two bath. So this here is an opportunity for you to rent out both rooms. It has two bedrooms, two baths. Okay. You just have to rent both of those things out. You can do that if they're okay with living together. Okay. So let's do the math on this thing. So $118,000. You're gonna put down, you can use an FHA on this on this unit, okay? So you can use, you can put 3.5% down, so, so times 3.5%, okay? So your down payment for this unit, okay? Your down payment is gonna be $4,130, okay? So that's the first thing that you wanna think about is what your down payment is gonna be, $4,130, okay? Secondly, also, what you're gonna do next, you're gonna then take a look at how much you're gonna then finance. So you're gonna then finance, you're gonna then finance 118 minus 4,130. You're gonna finance 113, 870, okay? All right, so this is how much you're gonna finance on this deal, okay? Your down payment is $4,100. So you have to bring at least, and the thing is guys, when you look at this money, you are not paying $118,000. So many people get this mixed up. So many people 
always say, oh, it's 118,000, or it's 300,000, or it's a million dollars, or whatever the case may be. You never look at this number when you're dealing with commercial real estate, okay? You always look at how much you're putting down because the name of the game is your tenants, the people that you have renting your unit, is gonna pay this loan down for you. They're gonna be paying this debt. This finance amount, they, your renters are gonna be paying that amount. So only look at your down payment amount when you're doing your underwriting on these deals, okay? So your, your down payment is gonna be $4,100. You're gonna finance $113 um, of that amount. And so then what you're gonna do, you're then gonna say, okay, all right, I need to find out what my income is on this property. And so the income on this particular property here um, is about $1,200 a month. So $1,200 you can get on this property unless you can multiply that times two. That is gonna get you $2,400 per month. Okay, $2,400 a month times 12, okay, times 12 is going to get you $28,800, okay, and I found this deal for you guys just to give you guys an example, all right, so you, that's what your income is going to be, now we get to look at your expenses, okay. The way to factor your expenses is to always look at, some, some people use a rate factor, you can use a rate factor, uh, but then what you can also say is about 25% of your home you're gonna use for expenses, okay? So $28,000, $28,800 times, uh, 25%, let's just say 25%. Let's say that you put 25% of your income back into the property to fix it up. You know, you have AC units go out, you have termite problems, you have a lot of different things that go on. So you always wanna allocate at least 25%, at least 25% back into your property. And as you get bigger on deals, you wanna go up to about 50% um, when you're doing your underwriting. But, the set, but, but for just a condo, it's safe to do about 25%. So we wanna put 25% back into the property, all right? So this is gonna put you at $7,200. That's your expenses. And you're gonna take $28,800, okay? Minus 7,200. What's that? Uh, Twenty-eight thousand dollars minus seventy-two hundred. That's gonna put you at an NOI. Remember, we just we just talked about NOI. Your NOI is income minus expenses. Okay, that's gonna put you at twenty-one thousand six hundred dollars. You always you always factor in your debt after after everything else. Okay, so your NOI is gonna be twenty-one thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, that's your net operating income. Okay, now we got to talk about what your, your so your, we already know your debt is gonna be about 100, it's, uh, your, you're gonna, your finance is gonna be 113, okay? Your debt, your debt is then, you got to factor in your debt, so you're, you're gonna finance 113, 870. Your debt is gonna be anywhere between, I say about right now, you can get your debt about 4, about 4%. So let's just say about 4%, okay? So uh, times 4%. That's gonna put you right at about $4,554, okay? This is gonna get you $21,600 minus $4,554. You're gonna make on this property per year, you're gonna make $17,046 per year on this deal, okay? $17,000. How much did you put down on this property? How much did you pay? How much did you pay on this property? You guys have to ask yourself, how much did you pay on this property? You did not pay 118 for this property. You did not pay 118, okay? You paid $4,100. Your tenants, your tenants are, is paying this loan down for you. They're paying your expenses. They're paying your property taxes, okay? They're paying everything, your maintenance. They're paying everything on this property. You just had to secure it. And this is the beauty of real estate. You guys have to understand the beauty of real estate. And if you're not in it already, you have to get in it. You have to understand the game, okay? So you put down $4,100. You made $17,000, okay? So let's do the math on, on that, okay? So $4,100 divided by, 
Where we at? Ah, divided by 17, 0, 46. This is the return on your money. The return on your money is 24% return. And that's how you make 25% on your money. So when people tell you, you can't do it, so let me prove right here. I gave you a property, okay? The property was $118,000. Your down payment on this property was $4,130. That's how much you put down because you use FHA loan. And actually it may be a little bit more um, of your expenses, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, of your expense, of your, of your, yeah, of your expenses because you have the, you know, the mortgage insurance for FHA, right? So it's gonna be a little bit more, but you're still gonna come out on top. But but your down payment for the sake of this scenario, your down payment is forty one hundred dollars that you put down. You're gonna finance. You're gonna subtract your forty one hundred from the one eighteen. You're gonna finance one thirteen of that amount. Okay. You push that to the side so you know your finance amount is gonna be one thirteen. Okay, your income on the property is twelve hundred dollars times two because you're gonna have two tenants in there. Okay, and this is assuming this is assuming that you're able to keep both of these units occupied. Typically, when I do underwriting, I like to do at least fifty percent. So I always account for fifty percent. So I want worst case scenario. This is perfect case scenario. Pending if you you if you have a hundred percent, a hundred percent of people living in that home for the entire year, no one ever moves out, and everyone is paying their rent on time. The danger with this, the danger with dealing with a single unit is the fact that if one person moves out, you're automatically at 50% occupancy, right? It's gonna cut your money, okay? Another thing, if you have, you know, eviction, you need to evict somebody, you gotta take them to court, okay? You wanna factor all of these things in when you're doing this underwriting, okay? So this is a perfect case scenario, okay? So your finance 113, 800, your income is $1,200 times two, depending if you have two people living in there, that's paying $1,200 a month, okay? You're gonna make about $28,000 in income, minus your expenses that you're gonna put back for the upkeep, $7,200. Your NOI, your net operating income, so that's your income minus your expenses, is gonna put you at $21,600, and then your debt on this, one, on this 113 is gonna put you somewhere around $4,500 um, per year that you're going to pay back to the bank, that's going to leave you with seventeen thousand dollars per year that you made on this on, on, on this year seventeen thousand dollars return that you just made on this deal. So your return is twenty four percent. Now you tell me, tell me which what you're going to invest in where you're going to make twenty five percent. I had people in my DM one time. I said, you know, you can make twenty five percent on real estate, right? And now, 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 keep in mind, keep in mind. This is how it is right now. This is only $1,200. Do y'all believe that it's gonna be $1,200 in the next three to five years? Or do you think it's gonna be about 